Good morning. morning. Peace be with you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Well, today we have a second sort of missionally focused Sunday in a row because it's LWML Sunday, Um, as you you may have noticed from the bulletin cover and and all that kind of stuff anyway. Um, But alongside the focus that we have on, you know, kind of missional things today in concert with the LWML, um, we were supposed to have a missionary update last week uh, at the service uh, from Amy Formella because it was Lutheran Bible Translators Sunday. But due to some technology issues that we had, we weren't able to show the video. So I'm actually going to have the video play for us before we begin the service uh, today. Uh, So once I'm done giving the brief announcements here, I'll play the video and then we'll go into our opening song, or our opening hymn. All right? Um, I do want to make a note that the the sermon hymn that we find in the large print bulletin. So for those of you who have the regular print, you don't have to worry about it at all. But those with the large print bulletin, the hymn is actually not listed, or is actually not in the bulletin. For whatever reason, the title and the number is correct. It's 704. Um, However, the words that follow after it, along with the music, is the wrong hymn. (laughs) It's just a little bit of a formatting issue. So in most of your bulletins, it should be X'd out. But just in case it's not, I want to make that note. Okay, so make sure you use hymn 704 in the hymnal, not the, I think the one that's actually there is an earlier hymn we have in the service, okay? So just for the, for the hymn of the day or the sermon hymn, use the, the number, not the words, okay? And our closing hymn is, uh, is a, a different set of words for us, but the tune is a regular tune because it's the tune for Onward Christian Soldiers, but we're using some words that were put together for the LWML for LWML Sunday, all right? All right, I'm going to play the video, and then we'll join together in heart and voice to sing our opening hymn. Hey everyone, just wanted to give a super quick update on what's going on in Sierra Leone. For the Mende Bible Translation Project, we are currently team checking Daniel, and then we're moving on to Malachi, and that's our last book for team checking the Old Testament. We have some books left for review, and a lot of books left for consultant checking, which is the most difficult stage to get done quickly just because it requires... um, a consultant who often lives in a different country. So she's dedicating more time this coming year for that stage, um, but it'll still take some time since she has a lot of other projects also she works with. Um, But in January, we will be starting the Mende New Testament for the revision. So the translators will each get books assigned to them to go through, revise, and draft um, the New Testament books. between now and next year, we will also be working on the Deuterocanonical books that will be added to the Catholic edition. So for the Temne project, they are currently team checking numbers. Um, they've totally completed drafting the other Old Testament books, so they're mostly going to be in team checking, reviewing, and consultant checking. Um, you maybe haven't heard me talk really too much about the Temne yet. I'm kind of new to the project, don't really know the language yet. I'm mostly helping with um, the translation software, exegesis a little bit, um, but I'm helping to learn the language better. This project was the one that my colleagues were in, but now um, they're in the United States. Um, They had to go back there for medical leave, and now they live there. Um, So I'm stepping in the best I can and hope to be better help in the future. I'm also working on my master's in New Testament from Biola University out in California. It's fully online, so I'm able to work uh, on the program from Sierra Leone or the United States or wherever I am. Um, I started in the spring this year, so I'm um, getting into my second full semester. Um, I really appreciate the opportunity to learn more about theology, exegesis, the history, the culture of um, the New Testament time, and I can use that obviously for the New Testament projects we'll be working on, but also applying the skills that I learned to the Old Testament. Um, I just want to thank you so much for all of your support, your prayers, your encouragement, for your emails, for always welcoming me whenever I'm home. 
and I look forward to seeing you all next time. All right, we join together in heart and voice to sing our opening hymn, Holy Spirit, Enter In. beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered together today to hear God's word, to call upon him in prayer and praise, to receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, in word, and in deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. So together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. 
Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. And as a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with our entrance hymn from Psalm 86, speaking responsively. For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving, abounding in steadfast love to all who call on you. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer. Listen to my plea for grace. In the day of my trouble, I call upon you, for you answer me. There is none like you among the gods, O Lord, nor are there any works like yours. All the nations you have made shall come and worship before you, O Lord, and shall glorify your name. For you are great and do wondrous things. You alone are God. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. I give thanks to you, O Lord my God, with my whole heart, and I will glorify your name forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, you make the minds of your faithful to be of one will. Grant that we may love what you have commanded and desire what you promise, that among the many changes of this world, our hearts may be fixed where true joys are found. 
Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for this morning's scripture readings. The Old Testament reading for today is from Ezekiel chapter 36, starting with verse 22. Therefore, therefore say to the house of Israel, thus says the Lord, it is not for your sake, O house of Israel, that I am about to act, but for the sake of my holy name, which you have profaned among the nations to which you came. And I will vindicate the holiness of my great name, which has been profaned among the nations and which you have profaned among them. And the nations will know that I am the Lord, declares the Lord God, when through you I vindicate my holiness before their eyes. I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the countries and bring you into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean from all your uncleanliness and from all your idols. I will cleanse you. And I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you. And I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and be careful to obey my just decrees. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The psalm is from Psalms 51, starting with verse 1. Have mercy on me, O God. According to you, your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. Behold, you desire truth in the inward being, and you teach me wisdom in the secret heart. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me with a willing spirit. The Epistle lesson is from 1 Peter chapter 1, starting at verse 18. Knowing that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot, he was foreknown before the foundation of the world, but was made manifest in the last times for your sake, who through him are believers in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. Having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth for a sincere brotherly love, Love one another earnestly from a pure heart. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the Alleluia and the reading of the Holy Gospel. Alleluia, these things are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And one of the scribes came up and heard them disputing with one another, and seeing that he answered them well, asked him, Which commandment is the most important of all? Jesus answered, The most important is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Having heard the word of our Lord, let us continue by confessing our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, 
being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated as we continue with our hymn of the day, Renew Me, O Eternal Light. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I'd like to start the sermon off today by asking you a question. What motivated you to come to church this morning? Your parents. That's a good answer from a con for man. That's the duty of the parents, right? I don't know if you've had this experience or not, but I know there's an experience that I've had when I drive around town, especially on Sunday morning. Well, I see lots of church signs inviting people to come to church. And I've often found throughout my life that it's difficult for me to want to step foot in a new church, in a different church, especially by myself. However, if I know someone who goes to that church, someone whom I respect, someone that I think has heart, that makes me a little bit more willing to go. I might let my defenses down just a little bit. I might be willing to have some faith discussions, some spiritual talk. And I might even accept an invite to come to church. What motivated you to come to church today? 
I think the beginning of the answer to that question is the people. Our people. You. And as Ladarius said, it was some of our own people that brought him to church today, right? It was his parents. This is LWML Sunday. LWML stands for Lutheran Women's Missionary League, and it is an auxiliary of our Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. It's got members all throughout the United States, and as the word missionary in their name suggests, well, they sponsor all sorts of missional efforts here and abroad, going all over the world. And they do that especially with their mites, especially with those little boxes that they give out every so often that we oftentimes seem to give to our kids to put coins in. But they're good for us as adults to utilize as well. As will be explained, I think, a little bit later when one of the LWML ladies comes up during the announcements to say a few words. But those mites, which we are also collecting today, we will collect the regular offering, but then also the silver plate offering is a mite offering given to the efforts of the Lutheran Women's Missionary League so that they can continue their work here among our congregation and throughout the world. All in the hopes of gathering more people to Jesus, sharing the good news of sin forgiven, of life eternal, now handed down to us from the cross. The focus for this morning's sermon is part of our epistle reading from 1 Peter chapter 1, but especially verse 22, where St. Peter writes, Having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth for a sincere brotherly love, love one another earnestly from a pure heart. And they say that picture is worth a thousand words. So thinking along those lines, I want you to flip back to the, uh, the front of your bulletin, your bulletin cover. Because with this, you can actually picture much of what the sermon is about today. The theme for the LWML for this year is Our Hearts in His Hand. I want you to think about a heart in a hand, a real heart in a real hand. Transplant surgeons hold real hearts in their hands. Transplant surgeons take out a diseased and dying heart and replace it with a heart that will bring life to that person. But that's exactly what God has done for you and for me. If you look at that bulletin cover there, looking at that design, that logo, well, do you see the cross and the droplet of water below it? The cross, of course, represents the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus dying for the forgiveness of our sins. But what do you think that droplet of water represents? Baptism. baptism. Yeah, baptism. Because it's baptism where you and I receive a new, pure heart with all the benefits of Christ's death and resurrection. Long ago, God promised through the prophet Ezekiel, I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put in you. And God has kept that promise. Unlike a physical transplanted heart that lasts for some number of years, the new heart that God gives you in baptism is one that is meant to live forever. Why did God give you an eye, this transplant? Well, here's why. I have within my own heart thoughts and feelings, ideas and urges that are sinful. If what's deep down in my heart ever actually saw the light of day, I would be so ashamed I would hightail it out of town. But I'm not alone in this, am I? I'm guessing that you, too, have 
such things deep down in your own heart. That would shame you if other people knew about it. My heart is not by nature pure, and neither is yours. Each of us is born with original sin, a sickness handed down to us from our parents, going back generations all the way back to Adam and Eve. But then on top of that, we sin daily and much. Daily we commit actual sins, we call them. And sooner or later, what's deep down in our hearts is going to be known. As the writer to the epistle to the Hebrews reminds us, no creature is hidden from God's sight, but all are naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. You see, this is sin in us. Original sin and then actual sins that we commit daily. This is the old Adam that continues with us, even in we who are forgiven. And thank you, Lord, for forgiving us. But still, this sin will continue in us until the day when we die. When you go to the funeral to pay respect to a person who has died and to bring comfort and peace to a family that is hurting in light of someone who has died. Well, the person who lays there in the casket before you is one who is no longer sinning. When you die is when you stop sinning. And that's actually the wonderful mystery of baptism. Baptism brings us the forgiveness of Jesus Christ here and now. And it gives us the grace to live new and holy lives here and now. And this is because, as St. Paul writes in Romans chapter 6, we were buried with him, with Christ, by baptism into death. So that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. And St. Peter describes it this way in 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 3 as a new birth, saying, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Christ Jesus from the dead. You see, mysteriously, baptism is your daily death and new birth. When a surgeon transplants a human heart, a new physical life comes to a fatally ill patient. Much in the same way, now God has mysteriously given you and I a new heart, a pure heart, and newness of life. And with the life that God gives to you, you are given his love, his divine, sacrificial love. Our, first, our reading from 1 Peter 1.22 says, Having purified your souls, By your obedience to the truth for a sincere brotherly love, love one another earnestly from a pure heart. Having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth. That almost makes it sound like you've made yourself pure somehow by keeping the Ten Commandments. But that's not what St. Peter is saying here at all. Peter is simply talking about faith. Our new heart, our new birth makes us children of our Heavenly Father. Children who trustingly look up to Him. Who want to live lives of holiness for His sake. But being pure before God is never our doing. It's always His grace. As St. Paul reminds us in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. I do want to also note here that when St. Peter says that faith is for sincere brotherly love, he's not trying to exclude women by any means here. In the New Testament, the word brother often means both men and women who believe in Jesus. He doesn't want to make any distinction because each of us is made an heir with Christ. So we can actually paraphrase it this way. Now that the cross of Jesus has come into our hearts through baptism, love one another. 
And once again, that logo shows it so well. If you take a look at it again, so you've got the cross that comes to us through baptism, the water that we find there, into our heart. into each of our hearts. And each new purified heart is surrounded by a much bigger heart. That's the church. A big-hearted place where all of our hearts are held together in the loving hand of our Savior. A big-hearted place filled with God's love. At the start of the sermon, I asked you a question. What motivated you to come to church today? And the beginning of the answer is, I think, the people. It's you. It's me. It's all of us together. As we experienced during the COVID shutdown, you can hear the Word of God over the airwaves. You can watch church from your couch at home or from the front of your computer screen. But being together in person around the Word of God is the truest reason that we come together. Together we receive God's wonderful word and all of the benefits he delivers to us in the sacrament as we receive his very body and blood in, with, and under the simple means of bread and wine, things that we can't receive at home. Together we receive the transforming word as we hear it spoken, and as we sing that word together in the hymns, as we physically receive God's wonderful gifts to us. So there's various reasons that we come to church, but more than anything else, we come to worship because here, all of our hearts are together. But most importantly, together with one another is in His hand. When you think about it that way, there's something different about worship from all the other associations or groups that you might be a part of. You might be a part of some other service organizations like Kiwanis or like the Rotary. You might belong to a veterans organization like the VFW or the American Legion. You might belong to a country club or even to a gym. Maybe you just like to hang out with friends during the week. And that's all well and good. But shouldn't there be something different about being here together, hearing God's Word? Something unique and special about fellowshipping with our fellow church members, gathering as the baptized to receive Christ's body and blood, to help each other bear one another's burdens. You see, this is what's unique about us coming together each week for worship. Because it's here that God delivers to us his means of grace that makes us a big-hearted fellowship filled with his love. That's how we love one another earnestly from a pure heart. And that, I think, is the main reason that we come to church. But not just for our benefit, not just for the benefit of those people who sit here in this sanctuary to hear God's word and to receive his gifts, but so that in receiving his gift, in loving on each other, in receiving God's word, we take those gifts, that word, and that love back out into our communities with us. Jesus is not just content to hold us in his hand. He reaches his hand out to others. Think about what happened during Jesus' earthly ministry. When the leper met Jesus and begged him for healing, Jesus didn't just have a few pithy words. He didn't just say, I'll pray for you. No, he reached out, he touched the man, and he healed him. When Jairus' daughter died, Jesus took her by the hand. He said to her, Talitha Kumi, little girl, get up. And she got up from the dead. When, G when, when Peter tried to walk to Jesus on the water, he started off pretty good, but then doubt and fear started to creep into his mind. And he sank. And there once again, Jesus thrust out his hand and grabbed hold of Peter. He pulled him back to safety. And Jesus took little children up in his arms that he might 
bless them. Today he reaches his hand out through you and through me, reaching out to people who don't know his life and his love, who still have spiritually diseased hearts, who desperately need to hear Jesus. I mentioned those other service organizations or other groups you might be a part of outside the church. It's actually really good for you to be involved in those other groups outside church. Because of them, you have an opportunity and an invitation to extend to people as they have struggles, as they have hurts, people who you know who've had their hopes dashed or watched their joys slip through their fingers like sand, people who don't know Jesus. You're there because you have a heart, a new heart, in his hand that is reaching out to others. And that is focused on the bulletin cover for a little while, but I want you to flip back to the page that has the sermon title on it. Because after the sermon, we have the LWML Pledge, which I'll actually have us all rise to, to speak, but not yet. But I want to note here, this pledge really kind of hits on why we come to worship and why our hearts are in his hands to reach out to others. Because our motivation is that first line. In fervent gratitude for the Savior's dying love and his blood-bought gift of redemption, we come to worship. We dedicate ourselves to him with all that we are and have. In obedience to his call for workers in the harvest fields, we pledge him our willing service wherever and whenever he has need of us. And since he has put our hearts in his hands, we take his outgoing love with us wherever and whenever we go. I'm going to close the sermon with a quote from Martin Luther who writes, What then is a pure heart? What is meant by a pure heart is this, one that is watching and pondering what God says and replacing its ideas with the word of God. This alone is pure before God. Yes, purity itself, which purifies everything that it includes and touches. And I pray that this describes each and every one of us here today. I'd like to ask those who are involved with the LWML to please rise. I want to thank you for your example and for your encouragement to our congregation. I hope that we all take these things to heart to remember the transformative and forgiving love that Christ has put into our hearts, that he has brought into our hearts and lives through baptism. Coming together in worship, God makes us a big-hearted people, and you are a part of that. As Christ extends his hand through this congregation and through your work with the congregation to extend to others. So for that, we want to thank you very, very much for all that you do. And above all, may we all keep loving one another earnestly. In Jesus' name, amen. I'd like for you ladies, please, to remain standing to help me in leading the congregation through the LWML Pledge. In fervent gratitude for the Savior's dying love and his blood-bought gift of redemption, we dedicate ourselves to him with all that we are and have. And in obedience to his call for workers in the harvest fields, we pledge him our willing service wherever and whenever he has need of us. We consecrate to our Savior our hands to work for him our feet to go on his errands, sing his praises, our lips to proclaim his redeeming love, our silver and our gold to extend his kingdom, our will to do his will, and every power of our life to the great task of bringing the lost and the erring into eternal fellowship with him. Amen. Will you all please rise as we continue now with the prayers of the church. 
Let us pray. Almighty God, you search our hearts and have seen our sin, and yet in your love you have reconciled us to yourself through your Son. Give us your Spirit, the Spirit of our Lord Jesus Christ, that our lives may grow in devotion to you for the salvation you have so graciously given to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide, we pray, our congregation in life and in witness. Give us your grace so that in a land where strife is too common, we will be a place of peace. In our divided nation, make this, your congregation, a gathering place of all hearts united in you who extend your welcome to all. Inspire all the members of your congregation to love this place where your name is invoked and your grace proclaimed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the mission of the Lutheran Women's Missionary League in this congregation and throughout the world, that every heart will beat with your love and all hearts extend your hand of service to others. Through the faithful gathering of mites, may Lutheran women in mission continue to encourage us all to put all that you have given us into the mission of reaching the lost and erring. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the daily bread that sustains us in life, for food and health, for housing and clothing, for employment, for moderate weather, for justice and peace in our community and nation, that in every time of abundance and time of need, we may know your peace in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We also pray, O oh Lord, for those in need of health and healing, for David, for Reverend Willie, for Maurice, for Reverend Martin, for Beatrice, the sister of Barb, and for Carl, the brother of Jane. We also give thanks for the successful surgery and the ongoing healing of Robert. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We also extend prayers for the family and friends of Ron who went to be with his Lord on September 24th, as well as prayers for the family and friends of Wally, whose funeral will be here this upcoming Saturday. We ask that you would be with them, O Lord, that you would grant them your peace and your comfort, even in the face of death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We also lift up prayers for the new life and union of Jason and Kimberly, who were married here at peace yesterday. Grant to them and to all couples, to all those who have been married into Christ Jesus, faith to last and love that will continually be extended between one another even as we forgive one another our sins against each other. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For communicants who come to your table to eat and to drink your son's holy body and blood, may they draw near with humble confidence in your forgiveness and reliance upon your promise of nurture as we faithfully walk the heavenward way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We continue with the presentation of the offering and the presentation of the mites. We continue with the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you, and saying,
Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment, you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve, who ate the forbidden fruit, and you justly barred they and all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy, you promised salvation by a second Adam, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that, that come to us in his body and his blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Welcome to the Lord's table.
as together we join in singing the Nunc Dimittis. the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh. We thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask that you not forsake your children, but always rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Please be seated for our closing hymn. Again, the words are in the bulletin. It's to the tune of Onward Christian Soldiers. After the hymn, we'll have just a few announcements.
All right, just a few announcements before I invite Lori to come on up. Uh, we return to regular church office hours starting this Monday, that is October 4th, uh, because Grace is now back from vacation. Um, so make sure that if you see her, you welcome her back. Uh, I'm sure that she had a lovely time celebrating her 20th anniversary with her husband, uh, and that is quite a nice milestone, isn't it? Um, I'm still surprised that my wife's put up with me for as long as she has. She mentioned so in the first, uh, the first uh, service as well. Um, uh, we want you to mark your calendars for adult instruction class, which is coming up on Saturday, October 16th. Anyone can come to the class if they so wish. It's good for kind of a, a, a reorientation and Bible study. Um, but the whole f the class is focused on the basic teachings of the Bible and therefore Lutheran doctrine. Uh, so this is one of the ways that we have people come into membership because this will you know, take you through everything you need to know to make sure that you're good for membership. Uh, but it's also a good refresher course. And I myself, as I've mentioned before, will be there as well. Pastor uh, Schrader is the one who is facilitating the class. Um, and there's going to be coffee, there's going to be some light snacks, as well as a decent looking lunch as well. So uh, it seems like a good way to, uh, to gather together on a Sunday. All right, a Saturday, a Saturday, on a Saturday. Ah. Um, we have a craft day coming up. Uh, so Peace is going to be hosting a craft day from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. for anyone who's confirmation age on up. Um, they're going to have some refreshments and things like that, but all these crafts are being made for the, um, well, for the Christmas bazaar, really, um, so that we can, as a church, gather together to sell a few extra items. Uh, and kind of enliven things like that a little bit. So if you have any questions or cares or concerns about that, then please get in touch with my wife, Ashley Fitch. Her phone number is there in the bulletin as well. Uh, and the last thing that I want to mention is that Trunk or Treat is on for this year. So please mark your calendars for Saturday, October 30th from 6.30 to 8 p.m. So right after the, uh, the Saturday evening service, we're going to get together outside to try to receive as many people as we possibly can. Now, I've already heard from a few different places um, that it's kind of anticipated that numbers are going to be up for the people traveling around for these sorts of things this year because of how much or how little th uh, people could do over the last, you know, year and a half um, as, as groups are trying to do some of these regular events that they've done in the past. They're seeing higher numbers. So we want to try to serve as many people as we can and have as many people, you know, come past our church as possible. Uh, there is a sign-up sheet in the hallway, so please, if you're able, sign up, you know, bring your car here, open your trunk, and we can really enjoy some time together and enjoy receiving people from our community. Um, this is just one of those ways that we can share Jesus in a very simple sort of way. Uh, before I invite Lori to come on up here, are there any other important announcements that I missed? Good. Lori, do you want to go ahead and come on up here? Okay. I tend to agree with Pastor Fitch. Like, why, what motivated us to come here today? It is our church family. And sometimes just seeing people in between services we can learn you know maybe pray about somebody who's having some troubles but it is um, I have some older brothers and sisters here as well as younger ones last Sunday Dr. Roy Peterson preached on the theme shaped for a purpose it was a fitting theme for a Sunday focused on missions and a fitting thought for today LWML Sunday the Lutheran Women in Mission organization, as well as the one we have here at Peace, Peace Mission Guild, certainly strive to carry out the purpose. It's a threefold purpose. First, and most importantly, is our collection of mites for mission work at home and around the world. We appreciate the congregation's generosity and purposeful giving to our mission goals. Secondly, we take heart to our Lord's desire that we encourage one another to be his witnesses in our communities and our neighborhoods. I think I've gotten a little more comfortable in my own neighborhood walking the dog, so sometimes uh, asking a few more questions. Last of all, Peace Mission Guild desires to encourage women in their faith walk that we may grow in the knowledge of our Lord trusting him and his will for us in all situations. To this end, 
We, have, we do have monthly get-togethers for the purpose of Christian fellowship, Bible study, half hour this year, mission education, and prayer. We invite all confirmed women of the congregation to participate as often as their situation may allow. So it's the second Monday of every month. And did you ever have a pep rally in school, high school? I remember a few. Sometimes the teachers got silly or students got to compete in special games. So we even have rallies for God twice a year and it rotates around our area. So there's one this October in uh, North Fond du Lac, details in the bulletin. Lastly, pray, please pray with me. Lord of all power and might, author and giver of all good things, instill in our hearts the love of your name and impress on our minds the teaching of your word. Bless these mites that through the power of the Holy Spirit, many may come to faith. Help us recognize witness opportunities in our life and give us the courage and wisdom to speak. Thank you for the blessings of Christian leadership that you have given to the women of LWML. May you continue to encourage them and keep them focused on the purpose you have shaped them for. In Jesus' name, amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.